Howdy folks and welcome to another ESP32 technical tutorial. In this edition we're going to cover watchdog processing. This is a, an area I've wanted to cover for a while and finally got around to writing it up in my book of notes. So here's the high level concept on it. Watchdog processing is the idea that when our ESP32 tasks execute we want to make sure that they maintain what we call liveness. And liveness is the property where the task continues to execute without, uh, without uh, uh, unduly being stuck or otherwise starved. So if we imagine an ESP32 task running, we start it up, the thinking, the hope behind it, is that it's going to get periods of CPU time in order to execute. Now, what if it doesn't? we want to be able to detect that it is not running. Now why then might it not be running? If we start a task, we expect that task to continue to get execution. So why might it not be running? There's a couple of reasons. The first reason is that it may be stuck in a loop. That task may be doing something where its logic doesn't allow it to make progression. For example, if the task is calculating some number and or some, some, some uh, expression and we just get stuck in a loop, then it's going to be stuck and it's not going to be behaving as we would want it to be. Another possibility of uh, a task being stuck is that it is being starved. Now what we mean by starved, that occurs when we have multiple tasks in our environment. Now let's say the task we're talking about has a low priority and there's a higher priority task that continues to run. So rather than our low priority task being given some allocation of the CPU, the higher priority task or multiple tasks are conspiring with each other to starve our task from getting its share of the CPU cycles. So that would be another instance of a task that we care about not being given CPU. Well, our first puzzle here is to be able to detect that the task we're ca we care about isn't being executed, it isn't being given its share of CPU instructions. And the way we detect that is with the introduction of what's known as a watchdog. And the idea behind a watchdog is that when our task runs, we expect our task to feed the watchdog periodically. Now the notion behind this is that as our task runs, we expect our task to get control and periodically when our task gets control, it reports back and says, I have control. Now if it doesn't report that it has control, the watchdog, which is a timer-oriented activity, will fire. And that is an indication that we haven't fed the watchdog in our configurable period of time. So here we see a, a picture, a diagram, and the notion here is that we have a task running. And periodically, as illustrated by these circles, our task feeds the watchdog by calling the ESP task watchdog timer reset function. So when the watchdog timer reset function is called, there's a period of time after which if we haven't reset the watchdog, the watchdog timer will fire. So here we call task watchdog timer reset and the watchdog timer will fire at this point, but here we have called watchdog timer reset again and the watchdog timer will fire at this point but here once again we've called watchdog timer reset but in this case we have not called watchdog timer reset in the intervening period and our watchdog timer event fires. So in this mechanism we are responsible for calling ESP task watchdog timer reset ideally before the previous watchdog timer interval has expired. Okay, well that's, that's pretty easy. Now let's talk about this in some more detail. When a task is created, initially that task is not registered with the watchdog timer mechanisms. That means that if that task just goes into a loop or gets suspended, we will not know, we will not be informed 
that uh, the uh, that the task is is not feeding the watchdog. So to make that happen, there is an API called ESP Task Watchdog Timer Add, and we call that passing in a task handle or null if we're calling it from our own task, and that causes the task that is currently running to be registered with the watchdog timer. Now after that we are now responsible for calling the watchdog task reset function periodically and we should be calling it uh, uh, within the watchdog timer interval. So what then is the watchdog timer interval? Well, we can call the ESP task watchdog timer init function passing out a period measured in seconds. And for the tasks which are registered for the watchdog, they have this many seconds to call the reset of the watchdog before the watchdog timer expires. If they don't, then one of two things would happen. Either we can have a panic, in which case the ESP32 will panic. That means that uh, it will either halt or it will reset itself or it will just simply log to the console that we have, uh, we have, uh, we have, we have panicked. Alternatively, if we say no to panicking, then all we get is a log message saying that we've detected a watchdog timeout. So we can configure our watchdog timeout, uh, our watchdog in uh, initialization, we can, we can specify our own timeout period. So having, uh, having walked through some of the theory of this, let's go look at a sample application and uh, some of its uh, implications for watchdog processing. And I'll put up a link to the source of this application and we can see what it does. So it does a number of things. Uh, in my sample here and we'll look and see what it does. So the first thing I do is I register the watchdog timer. I say every two seconds uh, we had better be reporting that re registered tasks are reporting back within two seconds or less and we will not panic if uh, a watchdog timer fires. I then create a task and then let's see what happens in my task. So the first thing I do is I register my task uh, as one to be associated with the watchdog processor. And then I go into a loop and every one second I, I report tick that I'm still alive and I do that for five times. So in this loop here we loop five times and each second we report tick but we don't feed the watchdog. So here's the log. So we come in here and two seconds into this, uh, this loop, a watchdog timer gets triggered. Now because we didn't panic, all we get is a log that the watchdog timer got triggered. We are told which task, and it's my task, this one here, that was triggered and we get a list of the other tasks that were currently running. And we see that the idle task is running and we continue looping around this for five times. Now we get watchdog timeouts because I am not feeding the watchdog. Now when this is finished we go into our second loop of five times and in this case we explicitly feed the watchdog. This is what we should be doing if all is behaving normally. And in this case we just loop round five times ticking away and everything is good because we are feeding the watchdog. We don't get an error indication that the watchdog needs to be fed because we have liveness. We are explicitly feeding the watchdog. Now let's imagine that in our task we need to do something that I'm consider, consider expensive. We know that we're not going to be able to feed the watchdog for a period of time. So what we can do is we can delete our registration with the watchdog timer and what that means is even though we're not feeding the watchdog we uh, are not getting uh, watchdog timeouts because we've explicitly deleted our watchdog. We can re-add it again and now we can go into a loop, not feed the watchdog and we see that once again we are uh, being told that we're not feeding our watchdog. Great. Now let's talk about getting starved. Here in our story I'm spawning a higher priority task. It's a non-blocking task but well but it's, it's a, a task which continues to loop, but the task executes at a higher priority. 
um, and then uh, I go into a loop spawning uh, five times my uh, lower priority task and what we see is that we are no longer feeding the watchdog because a higher priority task is running and this code is not being executed because we're being starved from executing that code. We still get informed that our watchdog timer is firing and then uh, uh, when the uh, watchdog, when the higher priority task ends, then we run through our ticks. Okay. So uh, that's that's pretty much it for watchdog ti uh, timers. If I run a hard loop task, a hard loop task is one which uh, literally uh, puts itself into a hard loop and does nothing. We still get watchdog timers because uh, uh, well, we still get watchdog timers because our task is still running, but it is it is not being it is not being reset. So that is the notion behind watchdog timers. Now we can uh, configure that the task uh, should be under our control here by calling an explicit watchdog timer initialization or we can use our make menu config capability and do some configuration in there. So let's bring up a make menu config and let's go into the ESP32 settings of our make menu config getting there just now and we see that we have settings here for oh I scroll too far for our watchdog so we can initialize the watchdog timer on startup so we don't have to initialize it ourselves although if we initialize it ourselves that does no harm and just overrides what was defined on initialization we can specify a default timeout for watchdog for tasks uh, here I've explicitly coded it to 2 but I can configure uh, the default is 5 we can set a watchdog timeout on our idle task now the idle task would basically say that we can detect that there's CPU starvation on idle processing. So that's good. So we can either explicitly control our watchdog timer for tasks or we can uh, uh, implicitly control it through our uh, make menu config. Now there's one last thing I want to talk about relating to uh, watchdog timers and that is a second concept called the interrupt watchdog. Now within the ESP32 which is running uh, free RTOS there's the concept that free RTOS is ticking away and by default it's every 10 milliseconds we get a tick and that tick uh, can then preempt a, a task and then pass control to another task for its own slice of the operating system or rather CPU. Now if we are running with interrupts disabled with interrupts disabled, we have explicitly taken away the capability for free RTOS to be able to time slice between its tasks. And we have the capability of detecting that interrupts have been disabled for too long. And we can set up a, a watchdog interrupt handler that says if we haven't context switched between free RTOS in a configurable period of time, then that should also generate a watchdog for the inability to handle interrupts. Now I have a piece of logic in my code here where I am going to disable interrupts. So here I have disabling interrupts and then going into a high level into a loop. So let me run that. I'll pause the video for a second and then run that code. And we're back. And in this instance, what we find is that I've changed my logic to disable the interrupts and start a task. And what we find is that we get a panic from the ESP32. We get an interrupt watchdog timer timeout on the CPU, which indicates that uh, uh, we haven't fed the watchdog for uh, interrupt processing within 300 milliseconds in this, in this example. So uh, what that causes is a hard panic on the device because at this point we are conceivably all locked up. So when the panic occurs, we can either just log information or we can reboot the ESP32.
I hope you found this useful. I'll put up a link to this example source code on uh, the YouTube video. So if you want to, you can run these tests yourself. Uh, there's uh, only a finite number of APIs. The high level ones are you add uh, your task to the watchdog uh, timer uh, and you feed the watchdog timer by calling watchdog timer reset. And with those enabled, you've now got some additional diagnostic and liveness capabilities built into your, into your application. I hope you find this useful, and I look forward to making more of these videos in the future. Bye for now.